Hi, my name is Desiree. I'm a pediatric speech therapist. I've worked with infants, children, teenagers um, on their feeding and swallowing difficulties in the hospital and private se setting for the past decade. I joined the SIT in the beginning of this year because I hope to be able to impart and share my knowledge and skills um, to aspiring speech therapists who ha have the passion and the love to help these children with speech and swallowing difficulties um, in Singapore. And hi, I'm Valerie. I've been a speech therapist for more than 25 years now um, and I don't think I've ever regretted it. And over this time, I've actually worked with um, children, teenagers and adults in the health, social service as well as the private sectors. Um, I also joined SIT earlier this year. Um, I suppose because I really wanted to make a greater impact to the profession as a whole. Um, and apart from clinical teaching as well as research, I think my role is also to help the students to actually develop and to embody the values and the attributes that um, really underpin the professional demeanour of a speech therapist. As speech therapists, we help people of all ages who have swallowing, speech and language difficulties. This includes working with infants who have bottling issues, children who have maybe poor articulation or stuttering or voice issues, and those with social skills difficulties and language difficulties. For the adults, uh, we may help those with acquired language disorders, for example, an adult with a stroke, or even the elderly who have um, dementia. We help those with swallowing difficulties in adults as well, um, as well as those with um, stuttering and working adults like teachers and singers who may have voice issues. In most settings, speech therapists play an important role working as a team with other professionals. For example, in the hospitals, we work with doctors, um, other allied health professionals like the physiotherapist or the occupational therapist in helping the patient transit from a hospital setting um, into the community setting like for example going to a nursing home or going back to their own homes. As such, we will have team meetings to help with um, discharge planning and to set goals um, catering for each family and each patient. Even in the paediatric setting, we also work as in teams. For example, when a child is diagnosed to have a developmental delay, pediatricians may require the speech therapist input um, for the assessment and diagnosis on um, the communication difficulties or their language difficulties so as to help the doctor recommend appropriate school settings and appropriate support that this child may require. Yes, there is a growing demand for speech therapists. As our population ages, uh, we do anticipate that um, the elderly will require more support for their swallowing and language difficulties. We may also uh, be encountering more patients that may have acquired uh, language and communication um, disorders. In, even in the pediatric population, uh, because of the uh, growing awareness of um, children having developmental delays or language and learning difficulties, speech therapists are required in um, early intervention centres or even special schools and sometimes even in mainstream schools to support these children in their learning and their development. Once speech therapists have graduated, they have a wide range of settings that they will be able to work at. These include the hospital setting, nursing homes, elder care centres, community hospitals to help the, the adult population and the elderly patient. For those who prefer working with children, there are early intervention centres, special schools, preschools, um, hospital settings whereby they can also provide support. There are other avenues that a speech therapist can also work at including HR consultancy firms because we have skills in communication and body language. Speech therapists who are, have passion for teaching can also go into this area as well as research to help further support our community. Uh, 
Um, so from day one, the speech and language therapy students at SIT um, will be working alongside um, other allied health um, students from occupational therapy, physiotherapy, radiography, as well as dietetics and nutrition programs. Um, they will uh, learn the foundational modules um, and subjects, for example, anatomy, physiology, um, psychology or sociology, and they'll start building um, lifelong interprofessional relationships. Um, then they will then progress to uh, learning about the five core areas of um, practice areas for speech therapy. Um, and these are speech, language, fluency, voice, as well as swallowing. And in each of these areas, they'll learn about development. They'll learn how impairment across, occurs across the lifespan, as well as learn how to treat and manage um, individuals with these disorders. Because we're an Institute of Applied Learning, um, the students will definitely go out on clinical placements. And in the placements, they will um, put theory to practice. And they will also learn the professional as well as clinical skills that will help them to um, become future-ready, um, industry-ready clinicians. Um, I think one of the very unique um, aspects about the speech and language therapy program at SIT is that the curriculum was actually um, developed in partnership with very senior clinicians from the health as well as the social service sectors in Singapore. Um, the partnership was really necessary because we wanted to ensure that the curriculum um, took into consideration um, all the things that the students actually need to learn um, to work with the population that they will work with in the future. So, for example, they will actually learn about the local languages in Singapore. They will also learn about how to interpret the assessment data as well as the therapy um, outcome data um, in our multilingual and our multicultural um, population in Singapore. They will also have to learn about things like the ethical as well as professional um, practice um, issues that you know, clinicians will face in Singapore. So, so these topics are not taught in overseas undergraduate courses, mm -hmm. for example, in, the, in Australia, in the UK or America. And now the students can come to a locally designed course um, in Singapore. With that, we've come to the end of our interview. I'm Valerie. And I'm Desiree. And we hope to see you in our class at Singapore Institute of Technology. Bye.